you uh, work a lot with the cardiovascular health as well. How does that tie in with diabetes? How are they connected in terms of what is going on in the body and in terms of uh, you know, potential damage or risk factors? Yeah, so um, there's a phenomenon called um, endothelial dysfunction. And the endothelium is the inner lining of your main arteries. And the endothelium serves as a bit of a filter in that it, um, it's a very, very narrow cellular layer. Um, it doesn't have a lot of specialized receptors that help regulate the influx of glucose or fat into that cellular layer. And because it doesn't have those, those receptors, it makes it, um, that layer very, very vulnerable to the concentration of glucose and the concentration of fat that's in the body. We know that, um, that that process of endothelial dysfunction is caused by high blood sugar or hyperglycemia. It's also caused by having high blood fat. The consequences of endothelial dysfunction are that the arteries are no longer able to open up or dilate normally. They stay constricted. And endothelial dysfunction is also associated with inflammation in the vessel walls and associated with oxidative stress or sort of a rusting process that mm -hmm. can happen within the vasculature. Over time, the, very, the various receptors that do control sensitivity to insulin and influx of other nutrients into the tissues become affected. Those receptors become chemically modified so that they no longer respond to insulin normally. And um, that has, uh, comp you know, that has uh, repercussions in, in every system, in every organ. So we see very similar pathophysiologic processes occur with atherosclerosis in the body. We see the, the endothelial dysfunction that occurs. We see the oxidative stress that occurs. We see the inflammation that occurs that actually um, leads to the formation and deposition of, of plaque in our, in our arteries. So these are really parallel processes that, that occur. And again, because fundamentally the cause of the arterial um, dysfunction high blood sugar, high blood fat. That's why we see that process accelerated so much in type 2 diabetes. All of us are susceptible to atherosclerosis. We have all have periods of time where our blood sugar might spike up because we ate a piece of cake or you know, we have high blood fat because we ate a cheeseburger. Our body can handle that if it's every now and then. We might get a little temporary endothelial dysfunction, temporary inflammation. We know that that um, occurs after high fat meals, high sugar meals. But it's when it happens, you know, meal after meal, day after day after day, why we see the process accelerated so much.